Grazie. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank the Prime Minister, Croatian Prime Minister, Mr. Plenkovic, for his visit, uh, this, very, this very important debate in the European uh, Parliament. Uh, before this meeting, we, we have spoken on the most important issues of the European Union, also the situation in the Western Balkans. For us, is a priority, uh, also during the Bulgarian uh, presidency for the European Parliament, too. Uh, I am very happy for the invitation from the Croatian President of the Republic for uh, Mr. Vucic, Serbian uh, President. Uh, also, it's very good. The, uh, I am very happy for the positive uh, answer. Uh, this is paved the way for better relations between uh, Serbia uh, as candidate, uh, as full member of the European Union, and um, uh, Croatia. For this, I want to thank the Croatian uh, Presidency for the invitation. I think also the debate is very interesting. Uh, a lot of members, uh, 36 members of the European Parliament for the Catch the Eye. I think this is an important message for this uh, open debate with the uh, Prime Minister uh, coming in the plenary for the debate on the future of Europe. The European Parliament want to be uh, in the centre of the debate on the future of the European Union for this, uh, this idea uh, uh, with the, uh, on the debate for with, um, a lot of prime minister, I think is a, a good solution for paving the way for the reforms of the European Union. Mr. Prank, you have the floor. Grazie, Antonio. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, talk also to the representatives of the media after the three hours debate which we had at the plenary session this morning. I was thinking how it takes actually to leave this house in order to arrive at the podium. Otherwise, if I had stayed, stayed here, I don't think I would have had this privilege today. My main message here was to uh, convey to our colleagues and friends in the European Parliament that the Croatian government, which I'm heading, is a pro-European government. It is a government which is convinced that the strengthening of the mainstream policies and fight against populism and Euroscepticism is our common task. We have witnessed the effects of these trends in the 2014 European Parliament elections. I think we are witnessing, witnessing them across the member states at the various national elections. And I have a special task in trying to prevent such tendencies in my own country. And this is what I'm doing by continuous, substantial and informed debate on the key European dossiers also on, at the national level. After every European Council, I'm in front of the Croatian parliamentarians and I discussed with them for hours the same subjects which we have put on the table here. The European values and the European project itself are intrinsically linked with the ambitions, aspirations of Croatian nation, a nation that has finally, after nine centuries, realized its uh, international recognition and has become a subject of international relations only 26 years ago. Europe was our dream in the 90s, in the times when we were a victim of an aggression. It was our ambition when we wanted to transform and reform our society, undertake a political, economic and social steps forward. Now that we have been members for five years, we can make the first resumes, whether we are pleased with what we have achieved what are the areas where we can improve, what we haven't done uh, as well as we would have wanted, and also what part of the European project we want to be in the future. That's why my message was I would like to see Croatia in the inner circle. That's why two big FAR projects are joining Schengen and the other one joining the Eurozone. It is in accordance with the philosophy of my government, of its members, who have contributed over the last 20, 25 years to the European reality of Croatia. I believe that these debates will help us to exchange better the mood and the feeling on the key issues, such as the Spitzenkandidat or the transnationalist or the next multi-annual financial framework or the policy priorities which we would like to see financed by the EU budget in the future and how we can make a fine nuance between the European competencies and the issues of subsidiarity and proportionality. 
So far, I think Croatia has benefited from membership, and this is the way I would like to see my country continuing in that direction. Thank you, Antonio, for this invitation. Thank you for having been in Zagreb almost immediately after you were elected. Thank you for campaigning in Croatia uh, a year and a half ago. And I know that in you, I have a reliable and a close friend in the leadership of the European Parliament. Thanks. Thank you very much. <coughs> questions? Can you sing, please, that microphone there for the questions? Also in Croatian and yes. Italian, is possible too. Hi, Tomislav Krasnitz from Večerni List. Uh, question, I guess, for both uh, President Tajani and Prime Minister Plenković. These debates are just starting, debates on the future of Europe, and we've seen Irish Prime Minister a month ago and now Croatian Prime Minister, and they're obviously important. But uh, it doesn't seem that we witnessed a full house today. And we all remember uh, uh, the exchange you had with President Juncker when he was complaining that not all MEPs are, uh, seem to be interested when, when prime ministers of smaller countries uh, uh, talk to the parliament. Uh, what did you make of today's, how, how do you, how do you uh, see this message, you know, when, when, when it's a half empty uh, plenary session? And Prime Minister Plankovic, same question for you too. Thank you. Well, the European, the members of the European parliament are working hard every day inside the plenary, but also outside the plenary. The, 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 the work of the member is not only inside the plenary, it's also outside. A lot of meetings, also during the, session, the section. The session is impossible to stay here from the 9 o'clock to uh, midnight. For this, uh, the importance of the debate uh, is not the same uh, every day. But the meeting with Mr. Prenkoji is, is very important because it's possible to have an exchange a uh, point of view between the, the question and answer the catch the eye. Uh, the, I have had the more uh, 55 uh, for the catch the eye members for the catch the eye. Um, I think that's the, the, I think this is a good solution to have this uh, direct contact with the, the different prime minister. We will have in the next uh, session uh, other uh, prime minister. Uh, I think this is, is a good solution for uh, a strong engagement of the members of the European uh, Parliament inside the, uh, the plenary. But I, I think my, my job is to strengthen the, the European Parliament, to strengthen the work <coughs> of the members of this Parliament. It's the most important institution uh, inside the European Union. Yeah. If I may just uh, a short comment, Tomislav. Uh, I think this was the attendance which is expected and normal in the House of 751. I'm sure that all of those who wanted to take part in debate have managed. I understand Antonio has not been in the position to give everyone the time slot for taking the floor. And I'm even more sure that all the others who weren't there were glued in their offices and watching it at the TV. Thank you. Next question. Yes, please. It's arriving. It's, uh, Connor McMorrow from RT in Dublin. A Prime Minister, you say Brexit is a lose-lose situation. Do you think the EU unity can hold in phase two <coughs> of the Brexit negotiations? Can you repeat the last part, I'm sorry? Do you think the EU unity can hold in phase two of the Brexit negotiations? Yeah. Um, I was saying this ever since the idea was announced in 2003 that it's a risk of uh, having a big loss, and unfortunately it was a loss. I'm very much convinced it's a downside for the EU because we are uh, debating and working on on a daily basis with the sort of uh, inconvenient and in my view unnecessary process, uncharted waters, never ever before anybody went through the Article 50 procedure. I think the unity will hold. I take part in the European Councils, unfortunately in the format of 27, also not a very nice and a convenient situation when one of your colleagues is sort of leaving and then the Council transforms itself into a different uh, formation. Uh, the important element is that we are now behind the first phase with solid elements in all three aspects, uh, free movement, Ireland and the financial issues. Now we are in the second, but the critical element is what we shall make of the new relationship. And this is what I said in the debate. If you want to leave, 
a project. At the same time, you need to establish, obviously, some sort of contractual relationship, which will be akin to something that exists already with other countries who are cooperating with us but are not members. And therefore, um, I hope that we shall find a good compromise in the years to come and that uh, the whole process will pass with as little as possible um, negative elements on the agenda. On the Brexit, we are united at the European Parliament, European Commission and the European Council and the Member States. All together, uh, we are working hard for a good solution. Of course, for us, there are three uh, most important points. The European citizen right uh, for the European citizen living in the UK, uh, the, the border between North Ireland and the Irish Republic, and the financial framework. Uh, after the, 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 the first uh, agreement, uh, agreement we, we need to, to implement uh, this uh, framework in a, a concrete proposal uh, for a better uh, solution. And then uh, we, we will work hard for a good solution, for, for a vote uh, on the Brexit before uh, the end, uh, before the, the vote of 2019. I think there is a third question there. Novaro Croatian Television. Uh, this debate was about the future of Europe, but yet we, we've noticed that there have been a lot of questions about the border issues and the dispute between Croatia and uh, Slovenia uh, on this issue. So, President Tajani, do you find this fruitful? What was your assessment? And Prime Minister Blankovic, what did you get uh, out of all these questions uh, after being confronted with it? What is your assessment on this? The debate was very clear. Uh, of course, different positions. Uh, uh, Slovenian mem a lot of uh, Slovenian members of the parliament, a lot of Croatian members of the parliament. The position of uh, Prime Minister Blankovic was, was very clear. Uh, we are working for a good solution uh, of the problem. Of course, we need to respect the rules, but we, we are working for uh, a better cooperation between Croatia and Slovenia. Uh, thank you, Jasna, for this issue. I think we managed to clarify it basically three different positions. One is the Slovenian position, the Croatian position, and the goodwill of our friends in Europe to solve the problem. This is more or less the framework that we are all familiar with. Um, I think that the entire issue should be completely de-dramatized. The unilateral acts should not transfer the state-to-state -state problem to concrete difficulties of our citizens. That's something that I was really insisting on, and I'm very unhappy and I regret the fact that the fishermen are having problems because of the unilateral implementation of the arbitration award which Slovenia is keen to implement and we as a state, whether it's this parliament, this government or the two previous ones are not recognizing this type of acts in international relations are contravening international law and I'm not at all <coughs> satisfied with this situation. Despite that, despite the fact that we react as we must react as a serious um, uh, country and as a serious responsible leadership, we are open for dialogue and finding a solution. This is, in a nutshell, what we uh, have uh, offered to our Slovenian friends. And I said it's almost absurd that the only neighbor with whom throughout the uh, centuries of our history we never had a serious open issue. We have uh, a small item which, in fact, and I'm not sure how publicly this is known, even with this by us unrecognized arbitration agreement, only 84 Slovenian nationals would be living on the Croatian side and none of the Croats would be living on the other side. For me, it's not the unfortunate side of the border, it's more the sunny side of the Alps or uh, one of those slogans that we use for our tourism. So uh, in real life, uh, we can uh, minimize uh, the drama and we can minimize the negative effects to our citizens with uh, a gesture of goodwill. That's what I'm convinced 100%. Mr. Plenko, one last question. What about the role of the Italian minorities in uh, Croatia to strengthen Europe, uh, the good relations between uh, Italy and uh, Croatia and, Ven and Venice? also because they speak Italian but they speak also the Eastern uh, Venetian language. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the minorities that live in your country will help Europe? Well, absolutely. And Antonio knows, uh, even when we campaigned for, for last elections, for the first time my party, which is the leader, leader, leading party in the center-right spectrum, we had even the leaflets in Italian language. 
my coalition partners are all members of minorities, including the Italian minority. Uh, Mr. Radin, who is the longest serving Croatian MP, is actually now one of the five vice presidents of the Croatian parliament. I always treat minorities as a plus for our society, for our culture, and I will insist that they are always with us in order to improve the general tolerant atmosphere in the society, in the fabric of the Croatian society, and of course they can, they can be a bridge for solving any issues that we have uh, on the agenda between Croatia and Italy. Recently we had the intergovernmental commission that took place in Rome and we addressed everything from Adriatic cooperation, economic cooperation, culture scientific uh, trade. Uh, Italy is a great uh, trading partner for Croatia and also a political ally when it comes to the European project. Posso confermare tutto quello che ha detto il primo ministro Plenkovic e il fatto che oggi si sia espresso nel corso del suo intervento anche in italiano eh, rappresenta un segnale forte alla minoranza italiana che vive in Croazia. Posso confermare che nel corso della sua campagna elettorale ha eh, parlato spesso in italiano, si è rivolto alla comunità italiana, ha incontrato i rappresentanti italiani e che eh, un, un parlamentare eh, di madrelingua italiana, di nazionale, nazionalità italiana ma cittadino eh, croato e vicepresidente del Parlamento. Ho incontrato più volte la minoranza italiana in Croazia e, e molti componenti della minoranza sostengono eh, il lavoro del primo ministro eh, Plenkovic. Il fatto che lui si sia espresso spesso in italiano e io quando eh, ero eh, in, come vicepresidente del Partito Popolare Europeo sono stato invitato a fare discorsi in italiano in Croazia dimostra che da parte del primo ministro Plenkovic c'è grande rispetto per la minoranza italiana italijana i e, Kroacije. Mogu svakako podržati ovo što je rekao gospodin premijer. On je i danas govorio na talijanskom jeziku i pokazao je da u prošlosti poštuje manjine koje žive u Hrvatskoj, pa tako i talijansku manjinu u Hrvatskoj. U sklopu svoje kampanje posjetio sam Hrvatsku, tamo sam se susreo sa predstavnicima talijanske manjine i također moram reći da je značajno to što je podpredsjednik Hrvatskog sabora pripadnik talijanske manjine. Osim toga, manjine daju ogromnu potporu gospodinu Plenkoviću i njegovoj vladi i to što je on danas govorio na talijanskom jeziku ukazuje upravo na to, na to što on poštuje manjine. Now there is a, a split. Mr. Plenković, we speak with the Croatian journalist and we speak with the Italian journalist, okay? It's for both? It's for, it's... I have a question for you, Mr. Taliani. Yes. I would like to know why is allowed for Croatian government not to respect international law? Why European institutions allow that? Not to respect international law in the case of arbitrary um, um, arbitrage agreement with Slovenia. My, Why is it allowed uh, not uh, to respect international law by European institutions? Thank you. I said we need to respect the rules and we are working hard for a better cooperation between Slovenia and uh, Croatia. The problem is to achieve a good solution not to, to organize a crash between two European countries. Our work, our job <coughs> is to reduce the distance between the different countries when there is a problem. Okay, we need to, to respect the rules, but our job is to pave the way for a good solution of the problems. Thank you.